Tiny Tina's Wonderlands just launched on Steam after coming out on the Epic Store back in March. This game was playable on the Steam Deck previously if you had set up your Steam Deck to run the Epic Game Store. I went ahead and installed the game to my Deck's micro SD card, as this game's installation size comes in around 80 gigabytes. I never played the original Tiny Tina DLC for Borderlands 2, but I've heard good things about it. Overall, I enjoy the Borderlands franchise, but I wasn't really a fan of the writing and enemies in 3. On top of that, I suffered from severe stuttering issues on the PC while playing in Borderlands 3. Just like Borderlands 3, Wonderlands is also made on Unreal Engine 4, so we'll jump over to the cache card footage and get some performance numbers, battery figures, and see what settings to use here. Now the first thing I want to look at here is that when you start the game off, it just gives you this pretty glitched out looking screen, and I was pretty concerned at first that the game just wouldn't run at all. But this screen appears on both the DX12 and DX11 version. Now on the DX12 version, there's a compiling shader screen that pops up and loads through there. Well, on the DX11 version, there's just that screen. I assume that this is some pre-rendered like intro that's just glitched out and doesn't want to play back because of the Steam Deck. Now, as far as I could tell, even upon relaunching the game on both versions, this screen persisted. And I think that you might be able to get around it if you set like a launch option on Steam, like dash skip intro or something. I'm not 100% sure there. Additionally, there's at least one or two other times I saw this screen pop up during the game, and I'm pretty sure it happens when some cinematics are playing out. I can't definitively say that because I can't tell what's happening on screen when those pop up, but I'm pretty sure that's what happens. Now we'll jump over to some benchmarks to compare the different versions that you can play this game with. So off the bat, we're just going to use the in-game benchmark to get some figures. I'm using the low preset for the settings here, and I'll have DX12, DX12 with FSR 2.0, which is really nice that the game includes it, and then also DX11. Now I did run into one glitch here, which is right at this instant. I turned FSR 2.0 on right there, and it just hard crashed my game on Steam. I just went and immediately relaunched the game and turned the setting back on and honestly was fine. So maybe try setting it from the main menu if this happens to you, otherwise you should be good. I'll be setting FSR 2.0 to balance mode, and I think that's a pretty good medium for the Steam Deck on the smaller screen. Now for these runs, I actually ran each run two times, and then I will show you the captured footage of the second run, because this game does unfortunately feature that Unreal shader compilation issue that was a really big problem in uh, the first Borderlands 3, and it's a problem here as far as I can tell also, even on the Steam Deck. I thought this would be more of a problem with just the DX12 version, but actually in the DX11 version, it has these problems too, and I actually have some footage that I can show later on where each time I cast like a new spell, shoot a new gun, or use a new effect, the frame time graph takes a serious hit, and I could only suspect that's due to shader compilation happening. Because when these effects happen again, these same frame time spikes don't happen. Now overall performance wise, they're all pretty similar. I have the game capped at 60 FPS, and the benchmark does a pretty good job of hitting 60 FPS consistently. In the game, there's definitely more demanding scenes than in the benchmark. The FSR 2.01 does look a bit blurry at the low 720p resolution that's being, you know, upscaled to that resolution using the balance preset. So it does look softer, but on the handheld itself, when you're holding it, it doesn't look too bad. But there is something I want to go over image quality wise with this after this benchmark, and that has to do with the ghosting in the FSR 2.0 version because it can be noticeable and distracting. But if you look at our graph for our DX11 one that just happened, we saw some really gnarly frame time specs that just happened, and I actually tended to see more really bad ones on DX11, which I was kind of surprised about. After this, I'll go to some actual gameplay and show off some good parts and some pretty bad stuttery parts, but overall, I would actually probably side with the DX12 version here, especially if you want to use FSR 2.0 because it's only available on the DX12 version. Finally, all of these are running through the compat layer, obviously. All right, now we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison between the native resolution for DX12 and FSR 2.0 running here. It's definitely blurrier in FSR 2.0, but as I mentioned earlier, there's some ghosting that's about to happen, and it'll happen when these people are running by on the right side of the screen here. Look at the top of their heads. You can see that the ghosting is leaving a trail behind them as they run past. Now, this isn't noticeable on a ton of effects that I've seen, but things that are moving quickly through the screen, like characters moving fast or things like that, can leave this noticeable trail behind them. Even off in the distance in the background here with that giant moving around, I can see the trailing happen, and the image clarity is just better on the native version than the FSR 2.0 one here. From Digital Foundry's analysis, it seems like FSR 2.0 is more expensive than the plain version of FSR, but I didn't actually try using just regular FSR 1.0 that's built into the Steam Deck here at all because 
you'd have to go into some special settings to actually turn down the in-game resolution. For me, the lowest option I had available to me from the in-game settings was 720p, and I didn't really want to go mess around with things exactly. So that's probably enough of an image quality comparison for the time being here. I'll jump over to some gameplay to do some analysis there. So here I'm using the low game preset and I'm using the DX12 version of the game with no FSR 2.0. This game also has a very low setting preset, which you might want to try out, but honestly, if you're trying to hit around 60 FPS, the load does a pretty good job of getting you close to there. So if you lock it down to maybe 50, you'd be more solid with a frame time graph. There are peaks here and there for this, but I have played for a while at this point. So I think some of the shaders have compiled, but it's still pretty inconsistent with those frame time spikes. Now this is an indoor area, we're in a cave here. Outdoors I noticed worse performance in general, but I'll show some of that footage later. I'm about to go fight a boss here and our performance is definitely gonna suffer from all the effects that are popping off on the screen. Now this is the only in-game engine cutscene I encounter like this, but they locked the frame rate down to 30 FPS, but it does seem like the asset quality and lighting and everything is better than it is in the normal game, so it makes sense. Now also the reason I'm going with the low settings is because I'm really trying to hit around 60 FPS or as high as I can go because with a first person shooter like this that's very action focused, it's important to have a high frame rate to make the game feel responsive, fluid, and keep you from getting motion sick. It's super important to me. Now here you can see our graph is kind of jumping all over the place. I think a lot of effects are happening for the first time here that have not happened before. Like all these lightning balls that are hitting the ground and causing these pools of electricity. That's something that really at first was spiking the graph, but as you can see here, it's evened out a bit. We are hovering in the mid 40s, mid 50s, and sometimes even jumping down to 30 FPS. So not the best experience. The lowest I'd really wanna go for a first person shooter on a handheld is honestly around 40 FPS. 30 FPS feels really bad in my opinion, and honestly with a low FOV, it can make you feel sick. Luckily on the Steam Deck, since it's a PC and has all the PC settings, you can customize FOV to make it pretty wide. Once again, really jittery frame time graph there, but we'll jump over to a different segment of the game with FSR 2.0 being used now. So this is actually the gameplay segment right before getting into this dungeon that I was just in previously. And here our graph will actually be more stable overall, but our performance out here in the outdoor segment is lower than some of the indoor areas. But here I had actually been playing for a slightly longer, so I think more of the shaders had cached that I was encountering and we weren't seeing as many big spikes. When I'm flying around and doing a lot of gameplay here, I don't notice the ghosting as much as I would in, say, the benchmark where you have time to focus on it, but you'll probably notice it in some of the footage here. I don't have too much commentary to say about this part compared to the previous section, so I'll just let this play out for a while, and then I'll jump over to the DX11 segment and actually show some of the really time stuttering I was getting there where I was literally teleporting around for a while. Okay, so now we have the DX11 version here, and I'm actually showing you some of the overworld gameplay too. I had just launched this version, and I had not played it really before that, so I think a lot of the shaders were compiling here. But I didn't think that DX11 had real-time shader compilation, and a lot of games, you see people recommending you use the DX11 version instead of the DX12 version if you do have stuttering-related issues because of that real-time shader compilation. Now we still are running through a Vulcan compatibility layer, which may be the problem for this because Vulcan, like DX12, is a lower level API that also can compile shaders in real time. As you can see, our graph's really bad here, and it's about to get worse during some of these segments. Now one other game that was pretty notorious for having pretty bad frame time stutters was Elden Ring at launch. And obviously on the Steam Deck, Valve knows the hardware of it, so they can pre-compile those shaders and you just download some cache shaders right to the Steam Deck. But look at this right here. The game's freezing for extended periods of time, and it's not enjoyable. But I'll actually revisit the same area in a little bit and show you that the performance has cleaned up a lot, so I guess once these shaders are cached, you're good to go. Now I'm wondering if Valve just doesn't have pre-cached shaders that you can download for this game yet, like you do for a lot of other Steam games. This game has a question mark for the support. It's brand new on the Steam store, so I wouldn't be surprised if things get better with time. 
Now, at least for me personally, things didn't really get that much better in time with Borderlands 3 on my PC regarding stuttering issues, so I wouldn't hold my breath. I'll go ahead and jump forward to another gameplay segment I captured in the Sim Arena during the same session, where the performance is a lot more stable overall and we don't get whole second long stutters. But as you can see from me shooting the barrel there, it does trigger a frame time spike, so they are pretty reproducible. New effects pop up on screen and they happen. One thing I didn't test in this video was running the game on the internal SSD instead of a micro SD card. This probably would have helped the game streaming a bit, and I'm not sure if it would have reduced the stuttering. Now for Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is also an Unreal Engine 4, I didn't really see any performance improvement there from switching to the internal SSD, so I didn't think I needed to do it here. Obviously you'll get faster load times, but as far as stuttering goes, it didn't matter as much. So overall, I don't find Tiny Tina's Wonderlands to be the best performer on the Steam Deck. It is cool that you can basically hit 60 FPS, but it's not a consistent 60 FPS, and there's really bad stuttering. I kind of felt this way about Borderlands 3 too, where I really enjoy the visual styling of Borderlands, but the performance in Borderlands 3 was actually pretty demanding for what you got visually. And on top of that, it had pretty similar frame time spikes to what we see here today. For now, I'd recommend waiting to pick this one up and seeing if things get better, but hopefully down the line they will. If you want to check out more Steam Deck videos, check out my channel. I've got a bunch of analysis, impressions, and other things over there. I actually just put out a guide on modding Skyrim on Steam Deck, so check it out if you're interested. Like this video and subscribe. Have a good one.